Hello everyone, happy Monday. I hope you're having an absolutely blessed start to your week. I wanted to make this video short and potent. So I wanted to talk today about this very popular new age concept of the new earth. You know, Eckhart Tolle, for example, wrote a book called New Earth that sold over six million copies, I believe. And you hear a lot of people talking about this, that we're coming into the new paradigm, the age of Aquarius, the age of enlightenment, the fifth dimension. You hear a lot of this sort of language. So I just wanted to ask, are you really using your eyes if you believe this way? Is it does it really seem like with all the things happening in the world today, the virus, the, the, the global pandemic, the riots, the, you know, explosions that have, have, you know, in the past couple weeks, we've had explosions all over the world. So let's talk about this. So the Bible teaches that there will be a new earth. However, it teaches that the new earth comes by God's own doing, that God is going to restore the land through his own power. Okay? And those who are his, that seek him and walk with him, those who have given their life to Christ and walk with Christ, shall remain, the saints shall remain in the new earth. And the problem with the new age idea of the new earth is that Satan distorts everything. So the new age idea of the new earth is that we are going to bring about the new earth by doing yoga and doing internal work in like drinking ayahuasca and building intentional communities. Now, I just want to, you know, history repeats itself. And if you look at the ideologies that the people are saying in that more new age line of thinking, this is the exact same falsity that was sold in the 60s to the hippies, okay? Back then too, they thought, you know, everything's so dark right now and it must be because we're coming into the new paradigm. And it was all about oneness and love and all of these things that you heard uh, the same kind of language that you hear today in the new age community and the problem with this is that love is the answer however love is the essence of god and we discover love by by knowing god by giving ourselves completely over to god not by you know uh humanistic ideas of love which always get twisted by our fallen nature and that's why a lot of time in the new age world in the name of love you find obsession with polyamory and free love and all of these things which are actually false. Doing acid and having orgies isn't the essence of true love. You know, the truest love we've ever seen is Jesus Christ dying on the cross and forgiving even his enemies, washing the feet of Judas, knowing that Judas was about to go betray him. There is no higher love than that. And that's why Jesus is God. He is the embodiment of true agape love, the highest form of love. And that's why when we surrender onto him, now we actually walk in love. So. Again, I, I just wanted to bring this up so that we could look at this and see that we're being sold the same lie the hippies were sold. And what came of the hippie movement? They were, in essence, the biggest problem is they were pr protesting the Vietnam War. Did the communes and all of the stuff they were doing back then stop the war? No. Wars have gotten worse today. On top of that, it ended up in all sorts of HIV epidemics, uh, in STD epidemics, drug epidemics, and you had cults like that of Charles Manson. Okay, and there's also a lot of evidence, okay, the CIA propagated the hippie movement, okay? There's evidence that the Grateful Dead was involved with the CIA. Uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors, his dad was a high-level naval officer, okay? So whenever, whenever we start to see the darkness and corruption being exposed in the world and people want to do something about it, obviously the powers that be are going to give us their own false solution. Okay, and that's what the new age is. It's the same lie of the hippie movement. It's this false unity. True unity only comes through Christ because if we're not made a new creation in him as imperfect human beings, it's always gonna end up in a mess. So, you know, these new age ideologies is like a spiritual lollipop that the CIA gives us and then it's like, okay, go, go sit in your corner, Johnny. Everything's gonna be good, love and light, right? You know, it's all gonna be fine. It's a lie. And the thing is, if we truly know the Bible, okay, everything happening in the world today was prophesied in the scripture, okay, and on top of that, when we walk in the true love, which is the Holy Spirit, now we have power over the powers of darkness because Jesus defeated the powers of darkness by resurrecting on the cross because these are the gods of death. And they don't want us to know that, and that's why they've also infiltrated the churches, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother mess to talk about. Um, 
And lastly, one thing I want to point out is this idea that we're all one and we're all going to get along and this hypnosis they put you in is exactly in line with Luciferian globalist agendas. And it should be of no surprise to you that one of the most popular New Age teachers forwarded, co-forwarded a book with one of the most prominent uh, globalists, Mikhail Gorbachev, who's a, a communist that hates Americans, okay? Hates America, okay? And evil always comes in the name of good, always always no one would follow it if it came in the name of evil and that's why you see things like the black lives matter movement should we want justice for the oppressed absolutely but then you go on their website and they talk about how they want to destroy the nuclear family which is the, the you know having strong family structures is what keeps a strong society okay they want to dismantle our country so they can bring in their globalist agenda that is what we are seeing unfolding right now and the evidence for this is literally written on the back of the very dollar bill Okay, and again, with the, the New World thing, if you look at the Denver airport, which is literally called the New World Airport and has Masonic symbolism all over it, the literal murals they have depict the Twin Towers being chopped down, and at the end of the sword is the Holy Spirit, the dove, okay, so they want to kill the true God. Then the next thing is all the chaos and pandemonium that we see in the world today. Okay, you see fires, which has been crazy fires in the past year in Australia, California. There was a fire in France last week. Okay, um, and then death, you know, pandemics and, and all the riots, all of these things. And the last mural is everyone gives their weapons away and we're all happy, hunky-dory, and we're all one. And the Bible teaches that the Antichrist shall come in the name of peace and shall destroy many. And again, when you look into these globalists that run our world, what do they want? They want a one world government and it's all in the name of peace. Read, read Agenda 21 and Agenda 30 by the UN. It's all in the name of saving the planet and all this stuff. Okay? But it's actually a nefarious globalist agenda. So please wake up. And if you've been conned by this false hope, I don't blame you. I have been too. You know, for years I was. And again, it's just a twisting of what is of what God actually has for us. God is going to instate a new earth, but it's not going to come by us focusing on trying to fix the earth by doing yoga and starting intentional communities. It's by knowing Him. And God promises if we truly walk with Him and give everything to Him to just be His vessels, that He will deliver us from evil. Okay? Read Psalm 91. I personally, I know this is going to be a controversial statement, but I personally know someone who was doing missions work in China with his wife and a riot broke out and someone tried attacking him and his wife and God literally teleported them 200 yards away to safety. Okay, the miracles that we see in the Bible still happen today. I've seen them and many people have seen way crazier miracles than I have. Okay, so if you want to truly walk in love, seek to know Jesus. Seek to know Jesus. We are not capable of being perfect on our own power, and that's why Jesus came and died on our behalf. He destroyed every every force between us and the perfect power of God on our behalf. So seek to know Jesus. I pray the Holy Spirit convicts your heart right now and meets you. And now I'm going to play two clips. One is exposing the true nature of the hippie and psychedelic movement, okay, and how it was propagated by the CIA. And the second one is going to show that hallelujah, in the hippie times, People woke up to the same darkness that we're seeing in the world today, and there was one of the greatest moves of God of all time. Because the thing about New Agers and hippies, okay, is we're not just wanting to go to church and sing a nice song. We want the real thing. We want to live a radical life of truth. And if you look at the life Jesus called for, that's what it was. He didn't call us to go to church and call ourselves Christians. He called us to walk in the spirit and the power of God, to trample over the head of Satan, okay, to destroy the powers of darkness. Jesus said he came into the world to destroy the power of the devil. And that's what we're called to do. And that's the true love and the true light and the true power. And this is something we can all walk in. So just get on your knees and repent. Renounce trying to live, to figure it out on your own. Realize you can't and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. To Yehoshua HaMashiach. That's his Hebrew name. So bless you. Watch these clips and have a blessed day. Crowley had hoped to get his disciples into influential positions in America to influence the masses. One such disciple was former Harvard professor turned drug guru, Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary, the defunct Harvard professor, led the drug revolution in the 1960s as he handed out mescaline and LSD like it was candy to the youth. We can see here that Timothy Leary is under a painting which bears the number of the Antichrist, 666, who is prophesied to rule the world until he's destroyed by Christ at Armageddon. 
Timothy Leary claimed that he came to the realization that he was to usher in Crowley's new age when he was using Crowley's tarot cards. An admirer of Aleister Crowley, I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said uh, um, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law under love. It was a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he isn't around now to appreciate the glories that he started. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. We're turned on, and we're tuned in, and we're very dropped out. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. <laughs> Turn on, tune in, and drop out became turn on, tune in, and take over as the easily led Crowleyan youth culture was deceived into believing that they had received spiritual enlightenment when in fact they had swung the door open to Satan and his plan to destroy the world. Satan had effectively slipped in his destructive teachings to undermine traditional moral values through the cloak of a supposed anti-materialistic peace movement. Crowley taught that his satanic doctrine should be cloaked under the lie of love, and he believed the youth would fall for it. If Timothy Leary was Crowley's drug guru of the 1960s, Leary dubbed John Lennon and the Beatles as the four evangelists. The Beatles wrote the song Come Together as a campaign song for Leary's hopeful presidential bid that thank God never got off the ground. I took LSD like hundreds of times, you know, just taking out acid all the time, because I thought LSD was the answer for the world. I believe in what Timothy Leary believed in, that it was enlightenment, that you could discover God through yourself and through taking LSD, and all it did was make me crazy, you know? And my whole thing for a really long time was to get out of Los Angeles, to get out of the city, to get away from man, because I thought it was the city, I thought it was man. I, I thought it was all the people with short hair that, that went to work in the morning, you know. I thought, I thought it was their fault because they were paying taxes and, and the war was going on because everybody was insane in society. And they were accusing me of being insane and I thought they were insane, you know. So I left, you know. I left with a whole group of people in a big caravan, you know. And we went up into the mountains and I was up there and there was no peace. In fact, we got up tight at each other. We were at each other's throats, you know, like, like and we were supposed to be be into peace and love. And I left the commune and I went down into Berkeley and well there was a riot there, you know, and I saw long haired people throwing bricks at the police and, and I love the police now. I love this country now. I love the people in the country, you know. And everybody that was in the hospitals back in jail, everybody that was in the mental institution with me, so they're back in jail. And there's some guys that haven't even gotten out yet. And I think the only answer for anybody is Jesus Christ. My whole life I had never had really any conception of spiritual things. But when I found that there was a spiritual realm, you know, that went beyond this physical existence, it made me think, you know, because, well, you know, I had always known that there was Buddhists and people who believed in Krishna and, you know, Confucius, and I always believed in certain philosophies like existentialism, you know, and things like that. But my life was bleak, you know, I was lonely. And the loneliness manifested itself through drugs. You know, heroin to me was the best way that I could get away from this world, you know, because this world had given me so much pain, even in the short lifetime that I had lived. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. And then I came here and I was told that I was a sinner. And I found that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He, and when he died on the cross for my sins and your sins and everybody's sins, he saved us. And that word saved implies that, well, we, we just don't have to have this loneliness anymore, these games, or any of this. We are safe from this world, and there is from this fleshly existence, and there's a spiritual thing happening. One day I just opened my heart to him because I felt a need in my life right before I was saved. My life was better than it had ever been before. It was outwardly, everything was together. I'd realized all of my dreams, and it was in realizing them. I realized they were vain, they were empty, there was no satisfaction in them. And I, I knew it was nothing without God. I, the Bible says that, that we notice there are not many mighty or many noble or many wise that are called into, into God's kingdom. Not very many of us are, are wise or mighty. I doubt if, if there are any of us here that were ever noble. <laughs> but, well, when, when we get to heaven, there's going to be joy there. Like, like I know there was never joy when philosophers got together. There was nothing but contention and strife. When the children of God get together, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. I'm, I'm glad Jesus saved my soul because it's, it's what I needed and I didn't know it, but it was. And he'll save anybody, whosoever will, may come and, and partake of it because he's good. He sure loves us all.